Um, did you add the browser overlay in for this channel yet? to all those that are joining us for the Skarkon fight, which should be incredibly interesting. <clears throat> Bear with us, because we're trying to get everything set up properly. Were you able to import that, Betty? What? There you go. And now you can just drag us down there. Yep. Awesome. Coolio. Yes, we do. Scarcon Fortizar, the last standing Fortizar in Poshfin. A Horde Fortizar, and one that Horde has used over the past two years to absolutely decimate the Poshvin fields. And we are sitting at, for the first time, mind you, a whole timer fight for this Fortizar. So, as you know, uh, with the Triglavian expansion um, and Poshvin's introduction, uh the mechanics around this region are are very very different than a lot of the betty also stream cannot hear you um you might want to check the audio settings on obs to make sure your mic's being transmitted but there we go uh but the the big thing is is that poshman mechanics are not uh are are different than what regular case space mechanics are and a lot of the mechanics a lot of uh a lot of essential mechanics, really, um, within EVE are restricted in Pochvin uh, unless you have standings with the Triglavians. So, like, you can't repair your ship in a station. You can't use the repair station if, if you don't have a certain level of standings with the Triglavians. You know, little stuff like that that, you know, you really take for granted uh, uh, until, you know, you're roaming one day in Pochvin and you realize, holy shit, um, like, then you're, then you're like, holy shit, I'm out of luck here because you don't have the standings. But when Pochvin was first introduced, everybody had the ability to put structures down and the structures actually prevented, um, 
actually prevented, uh, actually got people around these mechanics. So people that are in Horde can fully repair their ships and their modules with this Fortizar without needing any kind of Triglavian standing. And so that grind of, uh, of that standing to them is a far a mile less than everybody else that wants to play here. So that's one of the big advantages here. The other thing is, is that Horde has a lot of the last few standing capitals that oh. were in these regions before they flopped over to Poshman during the expansion. And this is the only station those capitals can dock in. Wow, no, I've been grinding at my Triglavian standings for almost two years now, and I still can't do anything in a station, it seems like, so that's pretty significant. It's a huge, huge deal, and Horde has been using it as an advantage all of this time to really reign king over the Poshvin area. You know... So, I there's also the asset safety part of this. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so much like wormhole space <clears throat> in Poshvin, asset safety isn't a thing here. <laughs> Excuse me there. So it does loot pinata very similar to wormhole space regardless if the structure is abandoned or not. So all of those capitals that Horde can't get out of Pachvin that are stuck essentially in this station if it dies there's going to be station containers with those capitals wow yeah loop pinatas are really fun so i feel like this is going to go on for a while tonight i definitely think this is we are in here for the long haul thankfully i work from home tomorrow morning so if i don't go to bed until 6 a.m well then that's great i'd chug a red bull and power through the workday. <laughs> Which should be very, very interesting. Uh, the the most I, I honestly think the the most fun part about this Fortizar and, and the fight to come is that Horde really does have the advantage here, right? Horde uh, Horde has defenders advantage when it comes to structure fights. Horde has the capital advantage, right? And and, and uh, just generally. Those two thing alone, when you think about it, really change the course of a structure fight. When one side has capitals plus defenders advantage, I mean, we saw what happened when goons pre-staged the capitals for the M2 armor timer, right? So having that capital advantage plus the defenders advantage here really, really puts horde favors in for all of the fights that happen on this Fortizar. So what does that mean for the potential planning of what goons might be coming out with? Well, I think it'll be interesting that goons discovered last week that with the recent rogue changes, uh, rogues actually fucking decimate TFIs. So I feel like we're going to start to see this real power struggle of which meta is better, TFIs or uh, or rogues, for the, the, the new semi-battleship meta that's evolving these days. Oh, we'll definitely see once we get, um, once we see them come on grid. Yeah, I, I definitely think rogues will be interesting to see here. Horde paladins have obviously made a return, um, and the paladins work, they, they, they work so well when it comes to these defensive fights. Um, not so good on the offense. Uh, but as far as, you know, when it comes to defenders, these paladins can really, really deal some heavy hitting damage. So it's going to be interesting to see how goons have countered these before and how they might counter them tonight. In the past, we have seen goons do, uh, E-War, heavy amounts of E-War along with large DPS to take care of paladins. We have seen newts come into play against these paladins before. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, we do have a question in chat. Is there a damage cap? Yes, there is. So this is the whole timer. This will have a damage cap on it. 
And uh, one of the fun facts that we should talk about tonight is that Pachvin is on the same node as Wormhole Space. For all of us Wormholers out here, whenever goons come to fucking bash this goddamn fort, we get tie-dye in Wormholes. So we're definitely expecting some heavy tie-dye tonight, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and that's the fun thing too, because tie-dye and wormhole space, it's like, it's one of those things that just doesn't happen. So when it does, we kind of have this whole, like, unexplored mentality about how wormholes work in tie-dye, right? Like, you gotta think, wormholes are on timers, right? So who knows when you're gonna get an issue where wormholes in tie-dye means that it accepts more mass than it is supposed to before closing you know you never know the it's just it's so weird to have tie-dye and wormholes because the mechanics are just so utterly broken in there yeah so I, it's interesting that you compare pachman to wormholes because i know they're very like what are some of the other features in a normal fight that we would see out in space that we can't utilize here in pachman so one of the the biggest thing is capitals there hands down because you can't bring capitals into Poshvin anymore. Um, they just don't work. So the lack of capitals on the offender side is going to be an interesting mix here. We have definitely, you know, done Citadel fights all subcap. Um, but in reality, especially when it comes to these super huge tie-dye fights, you really need the capital support to be there. Uh, so it, it begs the question on how Imperium is going to be able to keep up the pressure and damage onto the Fortizar. You know, because you can't do it via drones due to PDS. The sentry drones, possibly. You know, we've seen tactics like Ishtars. Hell, we've seen, I think it was, uh, God, what fight was it? Was it, it was one of the ones up north when we were shooting one of the frat structures near X-47 and we had this big fight, 5ZZK I think it was, and goons kept up the pressure by having a random ragtag group of battleships warp between different safe points to shoot at the structure. So I wonder... Hi Dave. Real quick pop in the you don't need capitals to kill a fort, or even a key. No, you don't need capitals to kill a fort, but it's better. It's nicer to have. No. Anyway, I need to go back to work. That was a nice little puppet. Yeah. Hopefully he'll be back once they get settled. Oh, I'm sure. Once, once they get settled and the tie-dye starts to set in... You know, you're gonna have FCs probably wanting to pop in here to kill time. Yeah, I also think the whole fact that we don't really have local, although local is kind of popping tonight, um, that's also an indicator that, or a difference in the wormhole watchman space. So it is true, but I will say it is not a surprise in the slightest. Uh, even with wormhole space, it's very common when when we have you know one of our own big fights we will shit up local and then just not give a fuck because by that point everybody's got each other's d scans like there there's no harm to it um but it's when it comes to the smaller stuff it really does make all the difference with no local it definitely makes playing in Pachman a lot more in Poshman, definitely, I think so. Like, mixing gates with no local is something that you really don't see, and it's one of the things that makes Poshman so unique. So do you want to talk about a little bit about how Poshman is, how it looks as a system? Um, because so, so, it's pretty easy to move around. Yeah, so Poshman is definitely weird in its geometry um being a triangle like who would have thought of that <laughs> like all i can envision is the dot land map where it's just it's literally a triangle um so that that's always so interesting about Poshman space and the fact that 
you can narrow down filaments to be to a certain constellation and it's weird one of the fun facts about Pochvin is do you know how Pochvin's got their stars Breaking like the through. what what stars are retreating from Pochvin are they indeed yes no they're not they're no oh no are we not gonna get the massive fight we were promised? Goblin's win. Goblin lied, the Fortisar died? Hey, uh, back to my way. <laughs> Wow! Oh my god! There you have it. We'll see what happens here. There you have it. We'll stay alive. We're gonna keep shit interesting and see what happens, but good lord let's unpack this why why are they running i just i want to pull out that meme where the guy's getting out of the car you know and he's like why are you running why are you running <laughs> i thought horde's motto was eh, anything to shoot at goons exciting i think even i mean we get to watch a fortizar that needed this fortizar has needed to die for a year and it's finally gonna die sniper tell them to please please if anything give me the capitals because then i can use the wormholes in poshvin to bring them where those capitals belong in my fucking c6 Fraternities are earlier this year in Pachman as well? Yes, they did. Fraternities wasn't as much significance because while Frat was present in Pachman, they weren't actually doing much with it. And then uh, Norris kind of like gave up on the project altogether, and that's when Therefore died. Well, it certainly makes that interesting too for the Imperium and maybe being more active in Pachman in the future. Right? What this means, the biggest thing that this means is taking Horde down to the level of every other group in Poshvin. So Horde is just like everybody else now. They don't have a massive advantage over the OFs. They will no longer have the, the presence uh, to do something like, like kick Strybog's fleet out every day. You know, that kind of thing. The, this really takes Horde down a peg. And then the other thing is, you gotta remember, Poshvin is Horde's, like, number two income next to renting. Like, I would I would confidently say Poshvin money is probably in the top three for Horde money making. So... Oh, local just blew up. I'm watching it scroll right now. Damn. I was really expecting a fight out of word. I see everybody coming up on, on grid now. Yes, all of the goons are coming. We are seeing the presence of the rogue fleet. So we, oh, you're right. it looks like Imperium brought the Roke fleet. What else did they bring? I, is this all Rokes? Oh my god. Oh no. Okay, so they also have an additional Jackdaw fleet, which is interesting. Haven't seen goons fly Jackdaws in a long time. And then it looks like Init is now here on the field. Init with a TFI fleet. Which is interesting. Wow, man. I am... I kind of speechless, Betty. I... 
I don't know what to think with Horde not being here. I how mean, much how much time do we have left on the timer at this point? We we have about thirty seven minutes until the Fortizar is uh, until we are able to shoot at the Fortizar. We're still almost an hour away, and Horde already declared they will be leaving. I gotta say, this is just sad. Man, this is good. I was not expecting this at all tonight. No, not at all. And and the 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 well here's the thing the impending loop pinata is going to be additional hours of this. This is going to be goons and everybody else that could possibly try to get a ship out of this, me included. Because guess what? One of those station containers is going to have a capital. And if I can walk my way out of here with a fucking capital, shit, I will. And here I forgot my singing harvester when I came in. All, all of the yacht flyers will be enjoying tonight. Not the fight I was expecting. Man, Horde, what are you doing? I thought this was the precious. Such a precious fort and they don't even fight. I just... I'm blown. I'm shocked. Today we learned how to how to make you speechless, my It is hard to make me speechless, and yet <laughs> they did it. God, are the rogues too strong? I I'm stunned that they didn't show up tonight. Is it possible that they've been just working all day to get stuff out of it? I don't know if they're gonna try to extract shit out of it, but I know as soon as this fort is available, goons are probably gonna put a Hector on the undock. <laughs> I would like to say uh, Mark Resurrectus's official statement on this matter is the uh, the Keck emoji, <laughs> which, ah, I, which I think is pretty damn fitting. Oh my god, they're not defending it. Horde has passed on the Fortizar. They extracted their fleet. Oh god, it's sad, but it's hilarious. Dave pops in again and gives us another update here soon because I'm curious to see what's happening. 
Well, they're gonna shoot at it. Probably. Well, yeah, definitely. I don't know. I still think it could be a trap. By the way, the uh, dad jokes are blowing me away in, uh, in local. I'm trying not to laugh out loud. <laughs> But is dad They're jokes the name? I don't know. They were on the last big fleet that we were on for a while. You know, at least in comms. I bet you it's Alterari who did that. I bet you it's Alterari that told his fleet to put a dad joke in local. Oh, definitely. I wish 10 bucks it was 100% him. So, Alterari, if you're listening and you said that to your fleet, I owe you a million -esque. PH and Doctor Hundred Paladins, where are they? They left. They left. There's still 30 minutes before they can kill the fort, and they left. They pass. Almost. There's one on grid right now. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> We're sitting at 30 minutes on the dot until goons can start shooting at the Fortizar. I mean, I gotta wonder what the fuck Gobbins is thinking. My mind is reeling right now. I'm excited for some more fun times in Patchman, actually. shoot some rogue drones today to get at least 0 .01 standing so that they wouldn't get hit by the trigs while they were in, system, in the systems here in Pachman. Everybody's calling for their fight in, in local right now. Oh, the, the local warriors have come out. Sometimes these can be absolutely golden. Oh my god, a... <laughs> a... A, a, uh, initiative guy put in local a link to go play Scribble during the bash. <laughs> that is golden. Okay, there goes in it. And in it is dropping on what looks like five or six Tempest fleet issues that are off tether and just chilling. Oh my god! Like, free battleship kills? 
in it. Was that too much? <laughs> like, holy crap. Just slaughtered six battleships that were just chilling, man. They're unpiloted? Those were unpiloted battleships? What? No, they're not. There was no way. How did I didn't. I didn't even notice. Like, Horde, what are you doing? Okay, that's good. See, th these are the kind of local chats that are good. Somebody linked an in-game item, and the in-game item is called Military Experts in You from its first publication. There is, there's, there's a couple, like, really cool lore items. Uh, there's a couple of these books that you can actually read in the game for, like, lore shit. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, no, they're, they're pretty interesting. And the fun thing is, too, is that, um, ever since the late 2000s, I think, CCP has been, like, NPC stocking lo those items in Jita and stuff just for people that want to read about lore. You can actually get a, a lot of the game lore through uh, through those like trash items. I'll have to look those up. I didn't even know that existed, so that's always something that I'm. Interested. Yeah, have you have you never uh, like you know sho shoved a capital full of uh, full of spirits, full of dancers, you know all, all the meme stuff. I always take a, a marine with me. Mm. So I take I take uh, male exotic dancers. I take spirits, and there's one of them that's like a drug dust from like leftover Quave Zero or something, and I take that with me too. <laughs> favorite favorite carrier the Thanatos, hands down. Hands down to that question, Thanatos. Specifically. Shield Thanatosis. Well, first of all, the Thanatos has great damage application, right? It also has the unique ability of the, the sirens and whatnot, and those those tackle support fighters that can really make the difference sometime. Um, Thanatos has good tank, and you can shield or armor tank it, so it's viable for both pretty much, actually. The shield one is a little less than the armor, obviously, but it's, it's still a shield thanatos can still be pretty good um and then just like the way that it looks i love the way the thanatos looks see damn i would put a thousand quaif um in battle but asher has goons stock everybody of like 12 refits and cargo so there is no room for quaif what kind of content yeah what kind of content do you think carriers is still viable for carriers in solo or small groups so a solo carrier isn't going to do jack shit right in ye old 2019, 2018 days, carriers were so cheap and such a throwaway that it was basically an entryway into super ratting, right? They, they, they tanked pretty decently and whatnot back in those days, but none of that's viable anymore. Carriers, really, in my opinion, are only really good for fighter blobs. You know, whether that be uh, whether that be people groups that are skynetting a gate or sieging a Fortizar, for example, 
right? Carriers really only shine when it's a massive fighter ball of them. They do feed well, but honestly, TJ, dreads feed better. Carriers are way too expensive for what they do right now. And I hope that they revamp that along with the way that they've been revamping dreads. Because the T1 dread should be a lot cheaper soon once prices for T2 stabilize. I do agree with Hapslar. They are fun to fly. Carriers are very fun to fly. I really wish that they would bring back triage carriers, to be honest. I'm not familiar with, with what a triage so, carrier is. Before faxes, carriers were the unofficial faxes for motherships. And they had their own triage module. And then when supers changed a while ago they also changed they removed triage from carriers they made carriers dps boats and boosting platforms and then they created the facts but that's like even before my time and the only way i know that is because i know a bunch of old timers that constantly talk about it and the more they talk about it the more i'm like yeah I could get on board with triage carriers. <laughs> Interesting the things you learn on those late night mobile chats in your in your corporation. In turbo feed, it's just everybody pissing off Mark, pretty much. <laughs> like, no matter what the conversation is, it either lands on everybody annoying the crap out of Mark, or Mark spamming the Discord with uh, pictures of him as a child. Interesting. He's like, look at how young I looked. <laughs> like, we have, we have a whole... Discord channel called Mark's Baby Pictures. But it, it does get interesting. Back when I was in Lawn, our corp CEO would get drunk and he would go to his daughter and he would ask his daughter to pick a number between 1 and 10. And we would all put our guesses in corp chat. And whoever was the closest to the number she was thinking of, we got a random prize from our CEO that night. And so there was one time where he, uh, he raffled off a Nagelfar, and I won it. And he's like, all right, I'll get it to you in the morning. I'm going to bed. We're all like, yeah, no, you're good, whatever. He logs on the next morning. I'm like, so, so where's my nag? Where's my nag east? Where is it? He goes, what nag? I'm like, you raffled off your nag last night. He's like, no, I didn't. There's no way I was that drunk. And I was like, you were. <laughs> it's funny you say that because I bought a Nagelfar for me like a year or so ago. Yes. Correctly. That, that the same one, maybe? No. So the, no. One, the one that he gave me died in absolute glorious, uh, glorious battle on a dread bomb. But... My super that I sold to goons when I left, that one has been living since 2018-ish, and that was an old court mate of mine who he, I don't know what happened, but in real, he made a lot of IRL money at one point, like a lot of IRL money on some big sale in his job field, uh, and he ended up blowing uh, well, not blowing. He ended up spending uh, some of that money on Plex for Eve. So he bought that Plex, he sold it, um, and I believe the thing was that he bought so much Plex that CCP had to interfere and take the Plex out of his vault and then just give him the ISK 
because if he were to go to Jita and sell it, it would have tanked the Plex, Plex price for like ages. Oh wow. So uh, CCP just went in through a downtime overnight, pulled the Plex out of the Plex vault and just generated the ISK into his wallet. Um, so that's what they did for his Plex purchase. And he bought all of his characters a super, all of his characters a titan. Like this dude credit card warriored hard. And he, uh, one day he was like, guys, I accidentally just bought an extra Nyx. And we're like, what? And he's like, I was buying all of my characters an X, and I have seven characters, and I accidentally bought eight. He's like, does anybody want one? <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm just like, I mean, I'll I'll take one. And so that Nyx was gifted to me. It lived through uh, it lived through F Tech Nine. It lived through M dot Two. It lived through all of that um in battle and when i left goons i sold it to the alliance hangers to be used as srp cash oh that's nice yeah i like the way the srp works for goons in that regard yeah. norris lied goblins cried scarcon died is that the meme we're going with joe looks like it's that's what's going up in local <laughs> We're looking at about 11 minutes on the timer right now. 15. 15? Oh, looking at the wrong clock. So good. I have multiple clocks in my house, too. <laughs> I don't know. I look in different directions all the time because my ADHD, so I, like, I have to. You know, I have my phone in a specific place on the desk. And then I also look at the clock on the computer itself. And then I turn around sometimes to look at the clock on my bed table. Like, I I'm a mess. Don't forget about the Eve clock, too, so that you can keep time and eat time. See, I don't. <laughs> In my seven years of playing this game, I, like, figuring out Eve time is just an absolute enigma to me still, sometimes. Someone's like, oh, yeah, you know, the stuff's happening at 1600. I'm like, when? Wait, when? <laughs> Yeah, I have one set on my computer that's just Eve time, so I can click over to it and know and do the math real quick. I really think a quality of life change for these set piece battles is if CCP had a thing where it just showed the reinforced timer in your local time zone. I actually have a tool that you can grab for pings that will actually show your local time on it, but it's kind of cumbersome to use. I mean, that's fair. I just, uh, I actually just finished a, a bot project of mine um, with the Homefront community, with the new Homefronts. And uh, I wanted to do the whole thing on my own, but I really couldn't do it all on my own. And then real life got in the way, so I didn't get a chance to. But now I'm with a couple of guys that can handle all of that, and I'm just the back end dev. But we have a bot that helps players find other players to fleet up with for the home fronts over discord yeah i haven't tried that yet i, I really need to look into it with the uh um corpse yeah so um the interesting thing is is that all of the fits for them all of the fits for the different home front sites all of it corresponds to the empire that you do it in so Doing the Dread Assault in Caldari space is going to be different than doing the Dread Assault in Amar space. So, they all have different fits. Uh, you got different, like, FCs in the community that are like, Hey, I only do Jita. Or another guy that's like, Oh, I only FC from Dodixie and do theirs. Right. That kind of thing. So, it's kind of weird because uh, the FCs for the Homefront community, like the, the veterans that are trying to help people out, they don't uh, signalize themselves through time zone like normal FC groups do. You know, like they don't separate by here's your USTZ guys, who's here's your EU FCs. They, they separate on who's your Caldera FCs and who's your 
Amar FCs and stuff like that. It's weird, but it's interesting. Huh, do you, I'm more curious about this now. Do you see uh, everyone coming out of their school and just aligning with their school if they're new? Well, what that that's the uh, weird thing with um with the home front so far. Like the whole community aspect hasn't really been fully established yet. So, group like uh, NPSI newbie groups like Eve Uni and stuff, they they're kind of just doing their own thing with it, and they're not collaborating with the rest of like the newbies in in the corps, right? Um, which I thought would happen. I thought you would have groups like Carbon Fleet University and Pandemic Horde High Sec Division and Eve Uni and Brave, Brave new, Brand New Bros. You know, just kind of having what? <laughs> Don't forget a sentence raising. Yes, AR too, right? Everybody, everybody, just kind of getting together and and commonly, you know, helping out with it. But you know, we've kicked it off a little bit, but we haven't really jumped into it as much as we probably should, I guess. But I mean, you can, that's the thing is that you can always send them to the uh, the Discord for home fronts, and yeah. it doesn't. It, the whole point of it is that you you don't have to be restricted to your newbie group because you're just playing with other newbies everywhere, and then. It also helps the newbie corps grow too, because if you have someone in Ascendance Rising who then just goes play, it goes to play with the wider NPSI Homefront Operation groups, then you know they're like, oh yeah, I'm in Ascendance Rising. Oh, what's that? And then you start that networking there. So it's it's a huge opportunity that just has not been capitalized on yet. Uh, we have a question from Absalor about how I got involved in Eve. I, uh, I fought tooth and nail, my husband, in playing this game, but I loved watching him play. And he would, he showed me, uh, mine one stream, actually, and uh, it was a DJ set, and I thought the community was really cool. And all of the folks that supported him in the Alliance was just, it just was mind-blowing to me. And then he would stick his headphones on me and have me talk to this wonderful old lady from... Australia and she, I just wanted to talk to her all the time so I joined the game and got into it and I my anniversary is uh, next Sunday actually so two years as of next Sunday I've been in this game and I haven't stopped I learn every day and I think it's amazing see the funny thing is is that my girlfriend's starting to get interested in Eve because the last time she was over my house was when we were killing the TTT and she had, oh, to sit, yeah. she had to sit there while I streamed it all night. And she plays World of Warcraft. And so she's like, whoa, something new to try. Yeah, I mean, we would have potentially 13 women in this game if she joined. Uh, I already... <laughs> I, started, I started another alt and just have it training the Magic 14 just in case. I do the same thing for my roommate. I have, cause like I've tried to convince my roommate to drag him into this fucking game, but he won't. But you know, I I set up an alpha account and I shove it on the Magic 14 and I just let it go do its thing. Um, and then if they ever want to try, they at least have a little bit of a head start. And if they don't like it, well, hey, I get another alt out of it, you know? Yeah, it's. I think I had a very interesting path because I jumped into Nolsec two weeks into the game and that's a huge learning curve. Oh. So I actually made a, a high sec character and um, initially was with Karma Fleet University and then moved over to Ascendance Rising and I am still there with that character and learned a weeks. lot through just running around high sec. Betty, I went, I went into Nolsec on day one. I can't believe it. That's just crazy. I got in because of my father and he was rolling with CVA in Pravi Block back in 2016. And so the thing was, is that on day one, I created my account, I had it in Jita, and I got a venture, and I started making my way down to Providence. And then I died 13 times to the head <laughs> GP gate camp that was camped by Soviet Union, and I remember it like it was fucking yesterday. 
I died so many times and then I my dad finally came up to my room at the time and was like you should be down here by now it shouldn't take that long to do you know 30 jumps it's been like three hours where are you and I'm like well I don't know my whole I, I didn't understand that I was dying I didn't understand it at the time at all so I was like, my screen just randomly goes white whenever I hit this system, and then I start all over again. So I don't know what's happening to me. I don't know if I'm hitting some like space anomaly or some shit. So my dad had no idea what the hell I was talking about. So he watches me go through this fucking route, and he goes, oh, you died to a bubble camp. And I'm like, bubble? <laughs> what is this bubble you say? Uh, by the way, Itchy Scout, thank you for the five gift of subs. That's amazing. That's actually my hubby. Um, but thank you for the support. Love it, man. All right, we are officially sitting at the six minute mark. Let's go. And then it takes roughly, at damage cap, it takes roughly 20 minutes, I think, to kill Fortizar from there. Lighten up the, lighten up the overview right now. Yep, I can I can guarantee you that the remaining horde here is here to watch and possibly try to steal from some loot for themselves as the container spawn. Maybe they're hoping for their own capital. I know I'm gonna try my hand at it, even though my alt is neutral to goons and I'll probably get absolutely smacked, but it's always worth a shot to try to get an interesting ship from McCann. You know me, I'm just happy if I go home with a corpse at this point. <laughs> my weird obsession with the corpses. Another good question, what is the hardest lesson that I learned in EVE? Ooh, that is a tough one, because there is so goddamn many. Uh, I think the hardest lesson I learned was not to be a people pleaser. That's a good one. That was a really good Honestly, one. Honestly, <laughs> growing up with Eve, being starting Eve at 15 and like literally going through my teen years playing this game it has done a lot of things for me outside of the game as many players do with eve and i would definitely say the hardest thing i ever learned through eve was not being a people pleaser i think especially in the alliance it's a safe place to be yourself too yeah yeah it's great to have a group of people with common ground what advice would i give to women starting the game um if you're not a gamer it's going to take you a while and you kind of it's i hate saying it but you kind of got to be able to roll with the guys kind of thing if if that's the kind of gal you are i think you do really good in this game Yeah, it does look like we are seeing the Imperium Rogue Fleet kind of get in position to shoot at the Fortizar. So is all the other Imperium fleets as well. They're starting to come in. Wow. We're looking at the Rogue Fleet, the Jackdaw Fleet, the Tempest Fleet, Issue Fleet and an entire Exequator wing as well from in it. Four full Imperium fleets expecting a fight and unfortunately getting nothing out of Goblins. Wow. Jack, I'm very lucky that I am with a, a corporation that really supports women in the game. I think that's pretty amazing. Y'all got my back.
and we are looking at <laughs> two minutes until the Fortazar is able to be shot at, and we see three Imperium fleets already on top of the fort, ready to fire. Members probably begging to lock the fort and watch this thing die. We're already seeing the gunner of the Fortazar launch its fighters at the Rogue Fleet, which I don't think will be very effective. Yep, and we're looking at exactly 60 seconds on the dot until the Fortizar comes out of reinforcement. Tie-dye is almost at 50%-ish. I wonder if we're going to continue to hit tie-dye as goons fire upon the Fortizar. You know, we didn't really talk about tie-dye earlier. What, is, what does that mean exactly? Uh, so tie-dye is based off of Einstein's theory of time dilation uh, with space travel. That's what it's named after. Uh, and as far as Eve goes, time dilation does exactly what Einstein's theory is. It slows down the game. Uh, the, the rate at which the client is interacting with the server and vice versa is slowed down in order to conserve resources for the server to actually be able to process everything and make sure it can actually do that instead of skipping over calls and, and breaking. Is, was there a particular event in EVE that happened that made CCP make that change? I don't actually know. I think it just came with their general research of their multi-threaded technology at the time, and they were just exploring their options to see what they could do to improve the servers more than they already were. Yeah, we, we joke about uh, potato mode, but it's a thing in tie-dye. Oh, yeah. Go time. Yep, the Forzar is free to shoot. We are already seeing it paused within four seconds, which is nice. And it is being shot at by all three fleets. We're, she we're seeing a lot of horde shuttles on the undock things that are probably going to try to get the canisters after the Fortizar pops. Yeah, it's interesting. That's the only thing we've really seen on grid from them for a while. My biggest takeaway in life from playing this game. Man, that's a big one. Um, I don't know, let me think about that one. I think this game has helped me a lot in my career with working with people and my own growth personally.
I get to tell uh, someone on my resume that I have implemented or helped implement a mentorship program at this point, which is pretty amazing. That's a good skill to have. Thank you to all those mentors in our court, by the way. Oh, so now we have the official Gobbins Ping leaked here. Okay. On Reddit. Let's, uh, let me go ahead and pull that up and we'll give it a read. I was surprised it wasn't sooner. I believe people wait, wanted to wait until after they pressed F1 on the Fortizar to start posting. Ah. Okay. So, Gobbin said, too many dudes. Good form up, guys, but we are outnumbered 600 to 900. We're gonna write this one off and avoid a bigly feed. Rest in piss, the Scar Scarcon Fortizar. You outlasted the Goon Posh Fort by, like, a year. If you are a Poshman enjoyer, Posh operations will continue from the NPC station. Main hassle is getting everybody to positive standings. But otherwise, everyone else in Posh seems to be managing well by the NPC station, so can we. Pour one out for the homie. We shall avenge you, Scarcon Fort. I read that as some good hunting content in uh, drone, sleeper, and drifter sites. Absolutely. Hey, while well, there's a uh, map all going on. Hey, guys. Hi! Welcome back. Dave, are you surprised that Horde dipped? No, because I saw our numbers and I saw their numbers. Um, I have some herfing to do for Iron Man, though. Please to tell. We have a new show that's every other Friday, so it won't be this Friday, it'll be the Friday after. It's a D&D campaign, and in the next show, so not this Friday, Friday after, 21st, we're going to go and do a Logitech slash blue microphones um, giveaway for a piece of hardware. Could be a headset, could be a keyboard, could be a mic. Ooh, sounds exciting. It is. That's a 1900, no, 1700 even, Eve time. On the 21st, that show is. You should check it out. It's fun. It's new. What platform are you going to use for the D&D game? It's already started. They they use Roll20, right? It's not me running it. It's a already established campaign that we, we brought on to do the show. like that. I've never done D&D &D or watched I, it, but I think it'll be interesting. I never did D&D, &D, but this year I did promise myself I would try new things, and I did finally get myself roped into a D&D &D campaign that's going to be starting soon uh, with a couple of local guys. I almost killed somebody in my D&D &D game today. I have a wonder fireball and I used um, a little bit too, mo too powerful. Mm. We're doing a, a homebrew story uh, based in the uh, Vampire Masquerade uh, mm -hmm. universe. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be happening. We also have other shows. You should check our schedule. Um, I believe my going to do some wormhole stuff on Wednesday, which is yes. for any EU people. I'm actually um, starting a stream on Wednesday after Mufune, uh with Faction Warfare and our high sec feeder um, corpse and the um the alliance nice um yeah also we got uh some diablo going on on uh, monday Definitely anyway check out that schedule the um the four is at 80 percent by the way i need to go back to eve stuff awesome awesome thanks for stopping by dave i'll probably be back absolutely oh by the way iron Man is recruiting we are indeed. We did indeed. I thought about also doing a, a, a battle bit stream. Have you seen that game yet, Betty? I have not. Oh my god. 
battle bit is everything you've wanted out of a battlefield game it's an indie developer with three developers i think it's two coders and an artist that's the whole studio and it is a massive game it is 127 versus 127 in battlefield style game modes Wow, texting two to three million copies last month. Yes, it it so originally it was a Kickstarter project, and you could only play when you subscribe to their Patreon and their Kickstarter. But then they got it on Steam early access, and it just in the past month it's just blown up. So are we gonna look forward to seeing you stream that? Possibly. I thought I thought about streaming it every once in a while. I got stuck, suckered into a Steam ad the other day for a game called Dave the Diver, and I haven't played it yet. I was thinking about maybe introducing that one too. It's, it's about a scuba diver, of course, because I love scuba diving, so I couldn't say no to it. Mm -hmm. I saved uh, I saved only up in my wish list for the next INN charity stream. Because what, uh, whenever I raise money, I always think what's the best way to ra raise money. Well, that is embarrass yourself over the internet. <laughs> so only up is a rage game. It's kind of like, uh, do you remember getting over it? I don't. No. You okay. have to remember, I'm not a big gamer. This is the first Fair. game I've really Fair played enough. in a long, maybe since. Definitely since Final Fantasy X. Yeah, so yeah. so games like Only Up and Getting Over It are a, a special type of genre of games that are called rage games. And basically what these things are is that they're usually a platformer type game, right? And you have an objective to get all the way to the end. The problem is, is that there's no checkpoints, no lives, no nothing. So you could no end assets. up you could end up falling off of this pyramid that you're climbing and the only way to get back to where you were is to slowly climb again so it's old nes style rather like yeah super mario brothers and not just pausing the game and letting your mom make you do whatever you had to do and then go back to it yep it is you, there is no progress saves nothing you gotta do the whole thing in one go and if you fall you fall <laughs> and so it, they are notorious for making streamers and content creators that play these games it has a notorious habit of making you rage out of your mind there are countless clips of people's favorite content creators from markiplier all the way to dr disrespect like sitting there at their desk breaking their keyboard in half because of how rage inducing these games are because on top of the harsh on top of all of the harsh gameplay they purposefully make the physics and controls janky on purpose to mess you up even more yeah being someone that has rage in my name i don't know if that would be a good one for me <laughs> They are severely rage inducing and the latest one is called Only Up and it's been out for about two weeks now, two, three weeks, and uh, it, it's been blowing up as the new rage game. I believe there is, I think my favorite clip so far is from a streamer called Tim the Tatman and he was like, my son is watching me stream right now, so if I fall, I'm, instead of yelling cuss words, I'm gonna yell breakfast foods, and like not even <laughs> not even a minute later, he falls all the way down to the beginning, and he's just like, "Fresh toast!" and like screaming at the top of his lungs. It, it's funny that the whole point of the game is to induce the pure primal rage instincts of anyone who plays.
So it looks like, according to the Fortizar, it's looking to be, I would say, roughly about 65 to 70 percent. It's getting there. Definitely getting there. But yeah, I've been playing a lot of games other than EVE lately. It's nice taking to take a little break and explore what else is out there, you know? Oh, I'm still so young to this game, it hasn't bored me yet, so... I'm uh, it's not necessarily that like EVE is boring. You know, once you find the kind of content you enjoy, you know, and you've got downtime instead of station spinning, I go try other experiences. Yeah, my problem is I don't like to try to make ISK, I just like to lose it. So, yeah, it's not <laughs> it's not conducive for the mechanics I'm, of the game. I'm right there I with you. I just, I just bought a T2 Dread last week. Yeah, damn, I feel you there. I need to take a break from Diablo 4, man. I, I feel like that's all I see on Twitch right now is Diablo. Dia so, like, Diablo's massive. Like, especially the old games. They're just an absolute classic of gaming uh, history. It, Diablo defined the ARPG genre. Really. So, like, Diablo's massive. My pro problem is that Diablo 4, in all honesty... It has a lot of, like, remedial and, uh, what's the word for it, uh, uh, way too overcomplicated, it would be the word for it. They purposefully overcomplicate things so that they have extra time to do other, other stuff. Funny, I've been watching Itchy play on the other side of my monitor for a, a number of weeks now, and it's the first game where I've really heard him get like coarse with the game a few times, so that might explain it. Yeah. You tried to get back in the EF two or more months ago, but something came up IRL as you are not playing Eve. Yeah. No, that's valid. I mean, gr when groups are recruiting, they, they want active people sometimes, right? Like, uh, there are a lot of corps out there that are kind of definitive on themselves on, on playing, you know, a, a certain amount of, uh, a certain period of time in the game. But there are corps out there that are more relaxed on that. Definitely. Yeah, I'm a recruiter myself for our corporation, and we do we do look at activity and make sure that you're definitely there, or at least there for the interview. If you don't come back for the interview, how do we get you in? He's definitely cussed his computer a lot with Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I scream at Rainbow Six more. I tried to start uh, Harry Potter, and I am really bad at AWSD. I will admit to it. I'm really bad at it. If you ever watch me play Marvels on stream, that's it's a weakness. So I'm I just need to stay away from those games. That's why I like Eve so much. And I hear Diablo is mouse controlled, so I might get coerced into it eventually. You can always try again or find an active high set corp. There's plenty of beater corps available for the um, alliance that you can get into. Someone on Reddit goes, never tell Gobbins the odds. He'll run. That is amazing. Man, I'm really bummed. I was really hoping for, like, this massive fight tonight. Right? I was, I was really expecting to have to go grab a coffee tonight, but... 
it's just it's disappointing that they don't they didn't show up to this i mean they they didn't really defend the ttt that much it, was that surprising though i don't know well, if that was as surprising i wasn't expecting that for the ttt Your gin and tonic supply is happy that it's not going to be an all-nighter. Yeah, that is true. It is Sunday in, in the South for me, and we cannot buy alcohol on Sundays unless it's wine or beer, so we're uh, out of luck in our house. Our problem is, is that the apartment fridge is just too small for like large quantities of beer. So we just have to buy small packs, you know, like your your six pack or, or twelve pack of something, and and we have to wait till we finish those twelve before we go buy anything else because the fridge will be too full of beer. I could never get into gin, personally. Apple Solar, that's... Uh, Apple Solar, that's actually what my parents did. Uh, during COVID, when all the bars closed, my, my parents went and they turned their garage into a home bar. They even took my childhood toy box and used that as a base to create a bar top. It was. I, my uncle on my father's side, uh, before he retired, he was a carpenter. And so when me and my younger brother were children, uh, my parents had him build us giant toy boxes for all of our toys. And so what he did was, uh, well, once we got older and stopped using them, and my parents were building the bar, one of our neighbors was a carpenter. So my parents hired our neighbor to put the two, two toy boxes on top of each other, sand out the bottoms, and make it into a bar top. Oh, that's neat. That's a nice memory to have, too. So it looks like one of the init fleets are... What looks like one of the init fleets are starting to dip out a little bit. It might just be because there's no fight. Um, if anybody's shooting the Keepstar would be gracious enough to give us an update on the percentage. Yeah, I'm still sure, I'm sure there's still a fleet or two that hasn't come in to get their organ on it, too. Forty-seven percent. Okay. We're below the fifty percent threshold. Did I say keep star? Sorry, Tack. It is almost midnight here. Right around now is probably where I would have pulled out the red bill, but there's no point. This is when I just start streaming, like, barely right now. Now you guys are making me want to drink. I got work tomorrow, buddy.
comes another one. Yep, here comes another fleet. Although the the two fleets already are most definitely hitting damage cap already. I thought it was really interesting with the TTT. I was on the one of the fleets that was not sitting there shooting, and it was nice that we got to get on the kill. I think it was actually someone in our fleet that ended up with the kill. Interesting. It was really fun gate camping in Cheetah for a while to reduce tie dye on that one. You know what's really interesting with the uh, revitalization of faction warfare is that you actually have uh, Galente militia people gate camping perimeter. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I've. I've really gotten into the factual warfare side of things the last couple weeks. In fact, that's why I'm starting the, the stream that we talked about earlier on Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just easy. It's easy content to get into. It's a little bit like gate camping when you're waiting out of sight, but you still have the thrill of a fight because you know someone's going to come in. I, I really like it. That's awesome. I easy tried in and out of. I tried my hand on it for a little bit. And it was definitely fun. What I like the most about it is it's really easy to get the high set corp and the null set corps together in order to work together on them. Oh, absolutely. Gives those high set guys um, a little taste of the real PvP. So it looks like the keep is at 41%. I'm gonna take a drink every time you say keep. <laughs> Sorry, tired. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna happen. One percent on the fort. I say it's kind of interesting being on this side of the camera for once rather than being in the fleet itself. It is, isn't it? I say I had a lot of fun on the TTT fleet though. Comms was really fun on that fleet. It was. I wasn't on the goon fleet, unfortunately, but Turbo, we had a fleet shooting at the TTT that was pretty fun. Favorite oh. trig ships, Lashak. Gosh, Kiki, probably. I do have a new obsession with the Edencom ships, but I still haven't necessarily figured out what to use them for. I'm not a ratter. Abyssals. And I think that's really the only way I can get those out and use them. Abyssals. They're used in Abyssals a lot. Oh, I didn't know that. The Stormbringer is a pretty popular ship to do Abyssals in. Maybe I'll have to look at that. The only problem is, is that the ammo cuts down on your profit margin. I uh, 
one of my daily redeemables was a Thunder Child skin a couple months ago, and it introduced me to all the Edencom ships, and I became obsessed with them. I think they're really neat looking ships. That's one of the bad things about trying to get out here and grind on my standings is I need Edencom standings because of where I hang out in Highsec. And I can't necessarily go and bash the Edencom sites here. So right. it's a slow grind. Can we get an update on the Fortizar's health? I think it's going to be somewhere in the 30s. It's looking pretty close. Maybe early 30s, closer to 20. 31, okay. Nice. Almost there. Hello, is that Mr. Sonner's voice I hear? It is! Good evening. Evening, Sonner. How are you doing? I'm good. That's good. Are you sad that they didn't show? I am, actually. Uh, I was looking forward to another fight. It's been a good couple weeks for fights, actually. I've, I've been seeing that lately. It's been good fights all around for everybody. Unfortunately, I think the deal we uh, we just actually had a similar situation of this in a wormhole space where uh, we were all going to go fight hull control and uh, Unfortunately, we could not get into the C6 Because we had to roll our way into it and and Bob was just not looking down on us and not getting us into the C6 we needed Sorry if I'm only partially responsive some of the time. I'm a little bit occupied at the moment. Oh, yeah. Very good. What, which fleet are you FCing, sir? I actually am taking a backseat on this one. Uh, our good friend Jeremy Andadare is running fleet team. Oh, interesting. Is he running the Jackdaws? The Jackdaws are not ours. Interesting. I was surprised to see the return of Yakdaw fleet. Is that here to stay? In. No, probably not. Are we are trying? running a little bit on. We're uh, we're running them. I don't know. Yeah, so I was asking when we're gonna, when we're gonna get Harpy Feats back. Uh, I don't have any input on doctrines, but Harpies would be rad. I'd like a little kind of something besides Quorums anyway. Retributions. <laughs> and the, uh, we probably wouldn't use those just because. No, because they're retributions. The, 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 well, the copying seems to go one way for doctrines, right? We don't usually copy those. See, I'm on the side with Itchy over here. Bring back Yacht Fleet. Oh, 25%. 25%? Yes. We're almost there. It is almost dead. So are you going to get in on the kill? What? Are you getting in on the kill? Are you here? No, I am here, but not in anything that can whore on it. Unfortunately, I'm not getting on the kill. Turbo Feed did not want to come just because of how late it was. Our, our really, you know, this is around the time that most of us go to bed. Um, so we didn't want to show up for the fear of a fucking 15 hour Tide Fuck fuckfest. Uh, but after I told Mark that Horde had decided to pass on this, his uh, official response to the matter was simply the Keck emoji. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right.
I will, however, may or may not be gonna try to swipe one or two containers before goons splat my ass. Yeah, Itchy tried to talk me into putting a, at least a target painter on, and I decided not to. I'm assuming goons have their plans for these containers in the hopes that the horde caps are still in there somewhere. Yeah, I'm definitely not privy to that information. It would be the smart thing to do. Abs uh, uh, Absolar is asking what advice would you give a new FC? Uh, basically just send it. Uh, this is one of those things you learn by doing. Um, at the end of every fleet you take out, whether it went good or bad, Shut up. E evaluate it, analyze it, run it by people who know what's going on. Uh, and just basically keep doing it, keep getting better bit by bit. No one's born to be a good FC. Uh, it's you know There are people with some talent in the area, but everyone works hard at it. Tack wants to post a pic of corpses. I can see all the corpses sitting on my overview. I think I snagged about 40 after the TTT and all that tie-dye. Again, wasn't prepared with a sanguine harvester. I should have just left one out there overnight on that one. You know, these containers, though, I'm just thinking about... The last time we had a... a, a a loop pinata as big as this is hopefully going to be was AOM's Keepstar. Yeah. And that one took hours to extract the, those cans. Yeah, I'll have to thank uh, Big AB later for killing my Nighthawk. I came back in an interceptor. Oh, don't worry. At least you didn't feed Nighthawks to a bunch of Drake navies and they won because they had seven Kitsunes and your fleet had no E-War. Oops. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous, man. Some of these new wormhole groups, you know, you get you get our lead FCs and our Sky Marshals being like, oh, you know, they're they're new. They're not going to be flying anything expensive. We'll we'll crush them. And then they 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 bring sneaky shit like fucking six goddamn Kitsunes that are sitting a hundred off the grid. I'll tell you what, like with the pack changes and yeah, them losing a lot of their effective range, that's a secret buff to Kasunis, man. To yeah, any you were, any really, um, widows are becoming increasingly popular in wormhole fights. That doesn't surprise me. I think they're kind of an underutilized hull, but uh, a lot of folks in the know have been using them for, for a while now. Absolutely. No. Uh, drink of choice. Um, whiskey, probably is uh, is my go-to. Oh, I like cocktails. Uh, so okay. I like martini, old fashioned, Manhattan. Now Richard's almost there. there. I could definitely go for a nice dirty martini right now. Yeah. Sonry, are you going to be making an appearance at FanFest this year? Not this year, no. Um, next week I'm actually flying out to Europe for three weeks and couldn't really swing the two international vacations in one year, unfortunately. I might be in Vegas later this year, though. We'll have to see how it pans out. Fair enough. What about you, Betty? Are you and Zed planning to come over to FanFest? No, we kind of have a... Uh impromptu ASCII meet going to Cozumel in October, the normal week of Eve Vegas. That's right. That's yeah, right. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna be scuba diving with our with our court mates. That's awesome. Nice. I would I wouldn't mind going to Cozumel. I got my scuba certification last year and went to Hawaii. It was fantastic. Yeah. I, I mean you're fully invited. It's not that far. It doesn't really it's not really international, but it's you know what I mean? 
I'm, 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 in, I'm in Oregon. It's not too bad. I can get there in a day. Oh, I'm from Oregon. I didn't know that. <laughs> Where are you at? Um, I am from Vanita, which is a small city between Eugene and Florence. Yep, I'm in Albany. It's not, you know, Vanita yeah. is right where the country fair is going on right now, isn't it? Who knew? Yes, the country fair always came through town. I could tell you many stories. 10% on the Fortazar. Nice. I'm not what my answer's up here in there. What do you see next? Tide is at 41% right now. On the fort? Tie dye? Yeah, tie dye's not too bad. I'm impressed. Yeah. They reinforced the loads and then half the side didn't show up, so. Yeah, I uh I blew my big budget this year on moving out of my parents' house and going to FanFest. Well, it's definitely worth it to spend money on experiences. FanFest is going to be an absolute blast. I'm going I'm going with one of my longest Eve friends that I've known since day one. And he's coming along with me, and that's gonna be great. We're gonna have an absolute fucking blast. We got tickets to the top of the to the party at the top of the world. We got tickets to go have the charity dinner at CCP HQ with all the CCP guys. It's it's gonna be so much, so much fun. Okay. Well, that's cool. Like all the people I joined Eve with, I can't make them ticketed. Don't really play anymore. They came from a shared Counter Strike server that I used to be on back in two thousand and five. So all of the people that I knew came from all the people my dad knew, and not many, not many, not many of them play the game anymore. Most of them are retired, but um. But this one was <laughs> you, they, re they, they retired or they are tired? <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> Trust me, I tell them about, you know, hey, CCP did this this week, and I get, what the fuck? Like, 90% of the time, they're like... <laughs> oh, man, I, sure I originally stopped playing in, like, 2011, 2009, and then came back at the end of, like, 2019. And so much had changed that, like... POSs weren't really a thing anymore. There was a stuff called asset safety. I was so confused. Yeah, no. Some most of my Eve buddies they they quit in the height of the Rorqual buff era, and so it's just been to them. It's been nothing but downhill. I think we had we had one of our members who was like super big on industry and trading. He was looking at like pr present day prices for geckos and tritanium, and he's like, "What the fuck did CCP do?" I think that's interesting when somebody comes back and being part of the mentorship team for my corporation. Just those conversations on what's going on here or what happened there. Uh, it's surprising how much can change when somebody takes just even a short break. Yep. Oh, we're looking at five percent on the fort. It's gonna pop any minute now. It is pulsing its PDS. The cans should start spawning momentarily. Right, I recently decided to upgrade my computer. I've got a nice graphic card, enough RAM and all that stuff. I haven't had to do fleet fights on potato mode for a while now, and I'm loving it. I started off this game on a laptop that had, it was just for work, essentially, and uh, I would have to go over to Itchy's computer to look at a skin to even know what it looked like. That's how bad my graphics card <laughs> nice. was on it. But yeah, I'm, I'm rolling on a nicer computer now. I got a nicer computer uh, on Black Friday, actually, and I love this one. 
I, uh, it is my first time buying a pre-built instead of building it myself, and that was purely because the cost of getting a pre-build was hundreds of dollars cheaper. I think it's interesting how that's turned the tables since the last couple years. Well, well the, the biggest the, thing the about chip it... Short, the, uh, the chip shortages, right? So when right. that started happening, all the wholesalers were still getting the deals that they'd yeah, written their contracts for. Exactly. In fact, they're building a micro center two towns over, and I, I, I told myself I, I will be somebody camping outside that door when that store opens. <laughs> Ooh, we're at one percent. Here we go. One percent. It is about to pop, ladies and gents. It is the death of the Scarcon Forzar. The last player-made structure in Poshfin is about to die any second now. Uh, th there are others. I don't know if there's any forts, but there are still some structures. Main one. This is the big one. Definitely the big one. Wow, two like really enormous events in a matter of weeks as far as Fortazars and other structures being taken out. Tell you what, it's a good time to be a goon. We keep going from strength to strength. You know, for summer usually being a quieter time for this game, it's been pretty exciting. Yeah, oh, definitely very myself for sure. And I hope my team has as well. And it is done. It is over. The structure is dead. Some of the hangar containers have started to spawn. I, for one, am going to take my shot here and now. Let's see what I can get, ladies and gents. Which one are you working oh, to? Oh, that was an accident. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you know my, you know my wormhole corp has the direct entrance to delve right now. You know that, right? More content sounds great. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll start. I'll start bringing the uh, sixty-man legion comps. Yes. Or like those five horde dudes that keep feeding marauders. I like those people. People who come to delve and feed marauders are basically my favorites. That hangar container I opened had a Minmatar shuttle. <laughs> I was gonna say, if it's corpse, give it to me. Now I can't tell if more are gonna spawn, or is it only legitimately four or five containers? There's no way that would be the case, there's gotta be more. This one has cap boosters. Surprised you don't see more nukes in the system. I'm genuinely surprised as well. If there's only four hangar containers, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. There is a container that is full of our Mars shuttles that are all named Fart Shines. Amazing. <laughs> oh, there goes a bunch of the hangar containers.
All right, let's go open a Busa one. How about that? That one should contain some juicy things. Parker, you're a stupid this looks like. So what happens now with the fleets? Like, is it just a free? Oh, you guys still guiding everybody on? I'm sure. I'm sure it's gonna be looking for the capitals if there are any. There is going to be a million and one people warping around as you are already seeing people checking containers, reporting to their FCs, probably in that desperate look for any capitals and anything else that might be juicy. Right, let's let's actually... I have one that's more shuttles. Well, it looks like that someone just got a Vedmac out of one of the containers. I was about to grab it, but he grabbed it before me. I almost got a Vedmac where the ship name was 69. And it looks like a goon did indeed kill my anathema that I left. So they're not even fighting for containers. A lot of these, for, a lot of these, the yeah, a lot of these hangars will contain shuttles. There's going to be an enormous amount of shuttles in these things. Hey, hey, hey Dave. Um, yeah, so a lot of the shells, if you see a lot of game shells, somebody transferred out to our area a couple of hundred shells. Was it, were, were those the ones named Fart Shines that I found earlier? I got hilarious. I just found a vet bag. I almost got the Venmac and then another goon took it. Looks like a horde guy got one of his Megathrons back, but it's being target painted by a couple of things right now. Probably gonna die, it's like right next to me too. Yeah, I think getting chipped out of here is gonna be tricky. 
I'm sure anything Horde recovers is going to be primaried pretty quickly. Wow, I found one with a lot of modules. Are these containers still spawning, do we know? I think they're done. Oh, maybe not. Maybe they are still- oh! Sorry, guys. Maybe they are still spawning. I'm just keeping this vet map looked up. Model logistics ship's available. Spot to stock up on ships in Pachman for us. Yeah, that number looks like it's growing still. It's moving on its own. I did recover a Lodgy Osprey. Get some. Which is literally nothing. Unless, please have like faction reps or something interesting fitted. No, it's a shit fit uh, Lodgy Osprey. R.I.P. And I'm already being shot at. Probably by <laughs> Guarantee it. Yeah, warping from container to container. But GG, the Scarcon Fort is dead. Are you relieved, Sonrir, that you yeah. never have to, God forbid, fight over this fort again? You know, I've got mixed feelings about it. Um, on one hand, like, you know, killing it's great right, because it's my fort. Thriller? But on the other hand, it was a great little thing to come play right, for if you want them to respond. It was a fun distraction to have Horde go defend this instead of something else. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, that's fine. I guess we can go shoot high sex just for a while. I found a container that is full of warrior tubes. Hope everyone remembered their their filament to take their stuff home. If anything, people can dock in an NPC station and then have an alt bring filaments out. True. Oh, we didn't talk about that. Patchman's really interesting in how you get in and out of it, right? Yes. So you it's either wormhole or filament. Wormhole or filament. Or Titan, if you have. Or my favorite way, which is self destruct.
The, all of those shuttles are ejected shuttles. Those are not manned. No way. I didn't know that. So if you look under the name column, if the name column is the same like that, then it's most likely unmanned. And hey, I just traded my interceptor for a tempest. Yes, it is. Raven ain't bad. I don't think we're gonna see any capitals tonight. I, for one, believe I am pretty much done for the night. I might go dock this Osprey up and hit the sack for bed. For work in the morning. Well, I'm glad you were here. Right? Um, and I, I'm not sure. Do you want to hang out uh, a little more, Betty? Or do you want to sign off for the night? Um, I think it might be time to sign off. Unless you guys in chat are wanting to watch everyone pick at the loot. I'm sure you can see it in, uh, in the game, though. Alrighty. Well, don't forget, guys. We have the new, uh, we have the new, we up, uh, upcoming this Wednesday, we have me and Mark Resurrectus doing some wormhole shenanigans, as we like to do on Wednesday nights. Friday nights, we have a brand new, uh, we have a brand new show, a D&D &D campaign run by a couple of Init people. Um, and then, uh, and then on, uh, Saturday, you have your regularly scheduled programming of Push the Talk in the Meta Show. And don't forget mine uh, after you on Wednesday. Yes, that is true. Betty has a factual warfare stream after the worm, uh, Wednesday wormhole shenanigans. So don't forget to watch that. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their night. May you all sleep in peace. I hope everyone can find the cold side of the pillow tonight. And have a good day at work tomorrow. I'm out. Okay. Have a good night, everyone.